So our speaker name is Joanna Lama. She is a legal associate in Horizon and Co Law Firm. Very briefly, I'm uh, Joanna Lama. I'm a Lebanese qualified lawyer. I'm admitted to the Beirut Bar Association. I got my bachelor degree from the Lebanese University, and uh, I got uh, the LLM degree from the University of London in international arbitration. I was one of the top five uh, worldwide. Uh, then I got a certificate in negotiation skills and strategy from uh, Michigan University. I've started my career in a law firm in Lebanon, then I moved to UAE. I'm currently working as an associate with Horizons and Call law firm. Uh, so yeah, tonight, uh, today I will be addressing two main uh, uh, practical challenges in the construction contract. Uh, as we all know, the construction industry uh, in UAE is considered a substantial and vital uh, uh, part of the UAE e economy. So uh, the government uh, in the UAE constantly seeks to boost efficiency to attract foreign investment to the UAE construction market. And the state's interest uh, in this sector particularly uh, is due to the fact that the construction industry uh, is linked to the development plans of the infrastructure uh, set by any state uh, to advance its economy. And here I should note that uh, uh, the construction industry in UAE has uh, mainly begun since 1970s. And uh, in light of uh, these, the construction industry in, uh, in UAE adopts and follows international best practices for construction contract governed by UAE law or implemented in the UAE law. And uh, by being a civil law jurisdiction, the UAE law principles are mainly codified in the UAE civil transactions, in particular from Article 872 to 896, as well as in the commercial code. And we witness that in the large scale projects, the contractor and the employer would most likely agree to refer uh, to uh, the International Federation of Consulting Engineer Forms of Contract, which is known as FIDIC, uh, considering that those kinds of contracts contain all the necessary clauses in the construction industry. And uh, by merely uh, referring to FIDIC, any dispute that might arise out between the parties in the future shall be referred to arbitration unless the parties expressly agrees to the contrary in the contract. And uh, returning to the rules of the construction contract in the civil law, uh, the parties are practically facing some uh, common challenges. Uh, for instance, the dispute over the letter of guarantee uh, that is submitted by the contractor to the employer uh, in return for the advance payment receive, uh, received from this letter upon concluding this contract. Uh, despite the fact that this dispute is uh, or arises out of a construction contract, it is related, uh, it's uh, regulated by the provisions of the commercial code, and it will not be our topic for, uh, for today. Uh, the construction contract uh, relates to multidisciplinary industry. Uh, therefore, it will uh, most likely not be implemented by only one main contractor. It will be implemented by several uh, main contractors from different specializations. Uh, for instance, they take to carry out the electromechanical works. Um, another one will uh, will carry out the, the build-up works, the interior designs, and so forth. Also, uh, in more uh, in uh, most cases, the construction contract will be carried out by a main contractor, followed by several subcontractors. And here we should distinguish between uh, two different uh, cases. Uh, on one hand, when there are many contractors, main contractors implementing the construction contract, each main contractor would have a direct uh, independent relationship with the employer. Whereas where, where there is a subconstruction between a main contractor and a subcontractor, uh, the subcontractor would be only having a relationship with the main contractor and could not be communicating directly with the employer. Only the main contractor will be uh, allowed to communicate with the employer uh, based upon the uh, construction contract signed between them. 
And here in the subconstruction uh, uh, case, uh, we uh, we all we always uh, uh, face some practical challenges. Uh, for instance, when would the subcontractor would be able to claim for its entitlement from the main contractor? In principle, it is assumed that uh, if the subcontractor uh, had carried out all the works assigned to him and the certificate of completion has been issued in, the, in that regard by the project uh, engineer consultant, uh, then the main contractor shall proceed with payment to then, uh, toward the subcontractor without any unnecessary delay. However, it might not be the case if uh, the subconstruction uh, contract stipulates a back-to-back -back clause. Here in this case, the subcontractor's dues would be suspended until the main contractor uh, receives the money for the works done from the employer in the first place. And the subcontractor would not be able to file a lawsuit against the main contractor to claim for, uh, for its entitlement unless such condition is met. And uh, in the event of filing such lawsuit, it would be formally rejected for filing it prematurely. Uh, what the parties could do in this case, the main contractor may give the subcontractor by virtue of an express clause in the, in the subconstruction contract, an assignment of right for the subcontractor to be able to directly uh, claim for its right from the employer. And this solution is resorted to avoid the challenges of the back-to-back -back clauses, which are arising uh, very frequently in the implementation of the, the construction contract. And uh, now we move to a very another important topic in the construction contract, uh, which is the right of the employer to terminate the contract at any time. The idea behind this is investing in the build-up and construction projects are high-cost investments. And at any time, the, uh, the employer might find himself unable to complete the project. Therefore, the law has uh, granted him the right to terminate the contract unilaterally. What would happen in this case? Uh, the main contractor might claim for compensation only if uh, he proves that the termination had occurred at an inappropriate time. In other words, uh, the main contractor uh, must prove that he has suffered damages or lost profit due to the sudden termination of the construction contract. And here, uh, it should be noted that uh, as a natural result of the termination of the construction contract between the, main con between the employer and the main contractor, uh, the main contractor shall terminate uh, as well all the contracts with all the subcontractors and he would be considered as an employer towards those subcontractors and here the same previous scenario would be applicable to him uh, in his capacity of being an employer uh, toward those subcontractors uh, in the event of filing a lawsuit uh, by the subcontractor against the main contractor to claim for any compensation due to the sudden termination of the subconstruction contract. Here, the main contractor may request the intervention of the employer in that lawsuit as an official litigant so that he would be liable for any compensation amount awarded to uh, the subcontractor against the main contractor because he's, he is liable in the first place and he has uh, terminated the, sub, the construction contract uh, which had led to the termination of, the, of, of all the subconstruction contracts. So uh, yeah, here's very briefly the challenges and unfortunately we cannot cover all the challenges uh, related to the construction contract because it might take uh, hours and days to cover all the topics. I've tried to um, to address the challenges very briefly. Uh, so yeah, thank you for your time and uh, hope to see you all in person. Thank you, Joanna, for your wonderful presentation. After accomplishing all the uh, glitches, after you know all the technical <laughs> glitches that we faced, we were able to listen to your 
beautiful voice and hear your uh, intellectual mind. So thank you very much for sharing your experience and talking about the contracts and bonds. So uh, I hope to see you in our next session, which is the awards sessions of the day. So we'll be giving the awards to all the legal fraternities, uh, to all the legal experts who have attained certain experience and expertise in their field. So see you there, Joanna, and I wish you all the best for your future and all the interviews. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Good uh, before you leave, may I quickly request you to smile for my backend team. We will capture the moment and the yeah. presentation that would get, was given by you. A broad yeah. smile, maybe. <laughs> That's so cool. Thank you so much, Joanna. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.